Ever wonder about life, the universe, and everything? Or how the universe keeps expanding? Or what is this dark matter that everyone speaks of in science fiction films? Well, I have, so today we're gonna find out. Come on, let's go to my lab. Hi, welcome to my lab. I'm Kira Hamill, the Science Mammal, and today we're talking about dark matter and dark energy. Science rules. Dark matter is a fascinating subject, but one that we don't know much about. It's a type of matter that can't be seen, but is estimated to make up the vast majority of all matter in the universe. The term dark means that it doesn't give off light or really interact with normal matter. There's been many explanations of exactly what dark matter is, but since none of these theories can be proven, it remains a mystery. One explanation is that dark matter is comprised of axions, hypothetical particles originally posed to solve other astronomical problems. A second theory explains dark matter to be made of WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles, another type of hypothetical particle. Despite not knowing what dark matter is, there are a few things we know for certain it is not. For one, it is not dark clouds of normal matter because radiation absorption from these normal clouds has not been detected. Secondly, it is not antimatter because the unique gamma rays produced when antimatter destroys normal matter are not present. Thirdly, dark matter is not black holes because there haven't been enough gravitational lenses observed if this were the case. On the subject of gravitational lensing, it is one of the primary ways of observing dark matter. It involves measuring the distortion of the light from faraway galaxies caused when the gravity of dark matter bends the light. The extent of the distortion allows for insight into how much dark matter may be present. The bigger the distortion, the more dark matter. Another way we know that dark matter exists is from studying the rotation of spiral galaxies. Vera Rubin, an astronomer in the 1970s, observed that the stars on the outskirts of galaxies were rotating much faster than expected. At those speeds, the observed mass of the stars was not enough to hold the galaxies together. The stars should have broken away from the galaxy, flying off into space, but they didn't. This led to the calculation that galaxies would have to contain five or six times as much mass as observed to hold themselves together. This extra mass was credited to dark matter. Dark matter was claimed to exist as a way to justify certain breaks in the laws of physics, such as with the rotation of spiral galaxies. Before dark matter was proposed, astronomers and physicists assumed their understanding of gravity and motion were flawed in some way. However, since dark matter has been considered in these instances of seemingly broken physics, they no longer defy the rules. One such anomaly involves the accelerating expansion of the universe. It was predicted that at a certain point, the universe would slow and eventually stop its expansion because gravity of the existing matter would overcome the outward force. However, the opposite has been observed. Instead of slowing, the expansion is continuing to accelerate. The only explanation is that some additional force must be propelling this expansion, which was deemed dark energy. Similar to dark matter, we're not quite sure what it is, only that it must exist to explain certain phenomena, in this case, the accelerating expansion of the universe. One theory is that dark energy is an intrinsic property of space, which fills all space with no variation in density and is created as the universe expands. A modification of this theory is that dark energy exists as a scalar field, which contains variations in density. Quantum theory claims that dark energy is made of temporary virtual particles that constantly form then disappear, giving energy to space. However, when calculated, this theory would give space way more energy than possible. The existence of dark energy would also explain the flat shape of the universe as opposed to a sphere. By calculating the expansion of the universe, it was possible to estimate how much dark energy exists. These calculations work out to roughly 68% of the universe being dark energy. Additionally, when dark matter is calculated, it makes up 27% of the universe meaning that only 5% of the universe is made of normal matter that we can see. Maybe dark matter should be the new normal matter. Find me here, I have a model of the different quantities of dark matter, normal matter, and dark energy. The difference in quantity between normal matter, dark matter, and dark energy, as modeled by various volumes of water, really put into perspective how much of the universe we're still learning about. Research into dark matter can have far-reaching benefits in the areas of science, technology, the environment, and society. By exploring dark matter and dark energy, 
our knowledge of the universe is greatly expanded, which could lead to scientific breakthroughs in areas like physics and astronomy. This knowledge may then lead to new innovations, perhaps harnessing the power of dark energy for our cars, or using the gravity generated by dark matter to draw asteroids away from Earth. Additionally, using dark energy as our primary energy source would positively impact the environment by removing pollution from fossil fuels. In turn, this shift away from fossil fuels would change society by taking power away from oil companies and resolving wars surrounding control over oil fields. Research into dark matter and dark energy has the potential to change the course of the world. Thanks for joining me, Kira Hamill, the Science Mammal, on this exploration into dark matter and dark energy.